Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to gear your team, how to maximize your artifacts. And before we start, let me present you guys with a structured plan. Because it's really hard for me to decide how to like title this video because I wanna give you guys a lot of information that I don't see people talk about too much that I get asked a lot. So basically we're gonna be talking about how to gear your team who you should be gearing, what you should be gearing them with, like how much should you level your artifacts, should you focus on main stats, substats, should you build your supports, not build your supports, focus on set effects. We're also going to talk about the differences in the early game, we're going to talk about abyss, goblets, stat priority, all that stuff. So this is really going to be a loaded, detailed video, and I'll try to keep it uh, relatively short. I'm sorry if the video seems disorganized, it's just there's a lot to cover and it's hard to sort of separate them in sections, but I did try to and uh, there will be different sections on the YouTube time bar if you guys wanna look at a specific one. Before we start, obviously I just wanna mention that I stream most nights and I'll probably be live when this video's out. So if you guys wanna come say hi, ask questions, uh, I really appreciate it. The link will be in the description. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is who to prioritize when you're building artifacts. And this is probably the thing I get asked the most, as you can see, a lot of people get confused on who to build because this is a game where artifacts are really important and if you don't build your characters correctly, they'll be dealing a very low amount of damage. Since we're limited on how many artifacts we can get uh, just by farming, it's a lot harder to uh, be able to max every character, so you need to know who to prioritize and who to build first to deal maximum amounts of damage without having to spend uh, infinite amounts of resin every day. So if your team comp looks something like this, where you have a clear main DPS and then support characters to help them out, most people's instincts would be max the DPS, and for the most part, that's okay. But how much do I have to max them? Do I have to get substats? Do I have to get just main stats? Do I need a good set? Can it be any set? And uh, all of that usually depends on your comp, your AR, and how much resin you have, and how much you're willing to invest into a character. And we're gonna try to talk about all that um, in this part. So as a general rule, you wanna be maxing your DPS. So in this case, I'd be maxing my Duluth. And we're gonna be talking about what to do in the early game uh, later in the video, but assuming you're AR 40 plus and you can farm artifact domains, what you wanna do is you wanna go for the set for your main character. Um, so if you don't know what set to build, I made an artifact guide for every character, but for Duluth, you want Crimson Witcher Flames. So what you're gonna be wanting to do is obviously you're gonna to wanna to get a, five, a four piece Crimson Witcher Flames. Now, what's good enough? What I would say is I would start by getting good main stats on four pieces and getting a Pyro Goblet. Now, goblets are something we're gonna talk about later, but usually the goblet um, is the most important piece and since it's so hard to get, you can be okay with getting bad substats and getting it from a different set. Apart from that though, you usually want a four piece of whatever your best set is or two two pieces, you know, depending on the character. For Duluth, you want a four piece Crimson. Now you might be asking, what's good enough? Do I need a flower that's this good? Not really. Usually when you're, especially at like AR40, when you're starting to build a character, you ideally want to get an artifact with a good main stat and then the rest isn't too important until uh, you can afford it. Now once you have that good base, I would level those artifacts and uh, before you start grinding really good substats, now ideally obviously you have at least one or two good substats, like example my, my feather has crit damage and all that stuff, but before you really need to grind that, I would recommend working on support characters. So to clarify, the way I would do it is go for a good artifact set on your main DPS, get it all leveled up, get good main stats, and ideally one or two good substats. And then once you have that, then start working on your support characters. For support characters, uh, it depends. Some need a lot of investment, some don't. We're gonna be talking about that. But um, in general, what you want is get that good stuff on your DPS, then give your support characters the set they want with good main stats, and don't worry about substats, and then go back to your DPS, max them, then go back to your supports and max them. So I said that really fast because it was just kind of an intro, but let's go into more details. So for support characters, what you're gonna wanna be doing is going for the set effect. Now. You don't need a perfect set. For example, my official still now and I'm AR 52 has a four star flower that's pretty terrible. Like it, it rolled HP, it's not a good flower, but I only have it just to get this uh, set effect. So for supports, you wanna be focusing on that good main stat. Um, obviously, if you have a good subset like this, that's amazing, but for support characters, you don't really need that. It's really just main stats, especially when you start maximizing artifacts like AR 45 plus when you can actually farm them. You don't even need, uh, for support characters, you don't need to go all out. You don't need to get them plus 20. You don't need to just shove all your resources into them, unless they're a support that requires a lot of investment. And to show you guys what I mean, uh, I'm gonna show you guys my Venti. Basically, Venti is a support where I'm using him to clump up enemies in my team comp and for the Verdescent set, which means I don't really need good artifacts on him. Now, keep in mind, I have a lot of five stars and these are like, some of these are plus 20, but if we look at this uh, Sans, for example, it's only plus 12 and I've cleared Abyss 12, right? Um, I just, like, it rolled defense. It's not a great hourglass, but the reason I'm not upgrading it further is because I'd rather not invest my resources into one of my characters that's not even being used as a DPS. I'm just using him as an Anemo support for the set effect. So what I recommend is you make sure you have the good set on your, like, Anemo character and just go for good main stats. Someone like my Bennett um, actually notoriously had a, a four-piece Noblesse at, like, plus zero for a long time. Recently, I've upgraded it, 
I got my flower to plus 20, I got my feather, oh, feather's only 8, but, like, my goblet I maxed, because later Floor's Abyss, I kind of wanted it. But for most of the game, you can get away with just putting a noblesse on a character like this, on one of your supports, getting just, like, one or two pieces leveled, and just focusing on maxing your DPS. And then when your DPS is maxed, has good enough artifacts, you can go back to your support character and level them up. Now, this isn't the case for support characters that require a lot of investment. Examples are Jean and Zhongli. Now, for Zhongli, he's a character that requires a lot of investment. And one of the biggest complaints is that for a lot of like low low level players, free to play players, you know, if you don't use resin refresh, people complain that he doesn't deal a lot of damage. Now, if you look at mine, I'm constantly creating 40, 50, 60k. The reason for that is because I've invested so many resources into him, but a lot of players can't do that, and that's understandable. So when you're running a character that needs a lot of investment, um, it's a character that scales a lot better into the late game. It's like why a lot of people were hating on Jean at the start, and now when people have her maxed out, all her talents maxed, all her artifacts maxed, people are starting to realize that, oh my god, Jean's actually really good. So what I'm running on my Zhongli is literally a fully maxed, like, plus 20 set. And Zhongli is a character that scales really well with artifacts. So if my artifacts were all low level, my Zhongli would be pretty useless. I'd swap into him, use my ultimate, deal, like, you know, 5, 10k damage, swap out, and that's it. But since I have so many good artifacts on him, when, when I swap into him, and since I get a lot of energy recharge from running double Geo, like I usually run him with Ningguang, when I do swap into him, he'll just shred everything. So sorry if my ideas were a bit uh, clustered throughout this section, but basically, try to max your characters that need investment. So ideally, you want to get a good set and stats on your main DPS. Ideally, go for some nice substats too, if you can farm for artifacts. Once that's over with, then focus on your support characters, get them good main stats and a good set. That's about all you need. You don't really need to worry about uh, substats on supports, especially uh, until like the really late game. And when you're going for supports, if you have any support that needs a lot of investment or like a sub DPS, let's say you have a child who's not C6, which mine isn't, uh, and you're running him as main DPS and you want a sub DPS, like let's say Diluc, let's say Ningguang, they'll need a lot of investment too. So make sure once your main DPS is uh, invested into, look at if you have another DPS or another support that needs a lot of investment, like a Zhongli, like a Jean, something like that. All right, so now I wanna to talk to you guys about when to like actually maximize, like min-max your artifacts and how important substats are. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, you wanna be getting your uh, main DPS a good set, then focusing on your supports, and then after that, you can go back to your DPS and actually go for like really good substats, almost perfect artifacts. For example, I've started going back to the Pyro domain again, the Witch, uh, the witch domain, to start min-maxing my Diluc, because for example, this circlet, while it may look good, is actually much, much worse than something like this, which basically just gives you free 17.9% uh, crit damage, which is insane. So while you can't be super picky, uh, especially until like AR 45, 50, like because you're limited on resin, you can't be too picky. Um, something like this is just good, right? It's good enough. Going, getting that good main set on the circlet, which is really hard to get, is usually good for a DPS. But once you start uh, having extra resin, once your support characters get good gear, once you... Um, basically run out of stuff to spend on once you can actually afford to maximize your artifacts, going for something that looks like this, where you have 62% crit damage with an extra 11% crit rate is just so nice because let's say you have three artifacts that have that crit rate substat, that's basically like you get a full other main stat for free. So I wouldn't recommend min-maxing until at least AR45. Uh, and once you're there, you can start trying to like improve. Let's say you have a bad pyro goblet, you just keep doing domains, eventually you'll get something that looks like this. You get a ton of crit damage, a ton of crit rate, um, and you just hope you get those good rolls. All right, so now let's take a minute to talk about goblets. What's good enough on a goblet and how, how do you farm them? So it's notorious that goblets are the hardest piece to get, but they're also the most important. If you compare the damage of an attack percent goblet on your main DPS versus the element they use or like a physical one, uh, wait, where's my, or a physical one, yeah. It's actually insane. So usually for every DPS I can think of, you don't want an attack percent goblet. I use one on my Chi Chi, but um, for a DPS character like Diluc, if you run attack percent on him versus this pyro, you lose so much damage. And that's even if your substats on the attack percent one are better, even if the substats on your elemental damage goblet are bad, it's still better DPS wise. So what I recommend for goblets is basically always just look at the main stat. Getting perfect goblets like this is basically impossible. Like this is a once in a lifetime goblet that I have. But for all my child videos, if you go back and look, I had a hydro goblet that had like no good substats. It had like defense, HP, all that stuff. But the reason I was using it is because it's so hard to get a good uh, goblet, especially from the set you want. So basically, uh, when you, since you're usually running either a four piece or two two pieces, the goblet is gonna usually be the um, just another set, just that one like odd piece. Last thing I want to say about goblets is don't worry about maximizing the substats. Uh, that'll just happen naturally. Like when you're farming for another character or whatever, you might see a random plus zero goblet with good substats. Uh, yeah, like this one for example. I got this like yesterday. I saw that I had crit rate and crit damage on a cryo one. I'm like, oh my god! Like I might have to replace my current cryo or whatever. 
But do note that Goblet is the most important piece. Uh, it's just really hard to farm for and you shouldn't be picky with it. As long as you have the good main stat, like let's say this Hydro Damage bonus, you don't really need to look at the substat unless you have two of the same rarity. So if you have like two five stars, you can look at which one's the best. We can talk a bit now about the stats that you want on your artifacts. So obviously this depends uh, and changes for like every character. And if you guys need more information, be sure to check out my artifact guide. But for, as a general rule, your DPS characters tend to want um, attack in the early game, but especially, especially, especially crit rate and damage in the late game. And the ratio you're looking for is two crit damage for every one crit rate, if you're trying to maximize it. And so usually for a DPS character, you'll have something where um, you're just looking for substats on these two pieces, then attack, whatever elemental damage bonus on the goblet, and for circlet, crit rate or crit damage. For support characters, it depends. A lot of characters like elemental mastery, a lot like attack, and a lot like energy recharge. A lot of characters like Bennett that are just trying to spam their alt need energy recharge, so that's usually what you're going to be going for. Whereas reaction supports might want more elemental mastery or attack, depending. I'm not really too sure where to put this, but we need to talk about early game artifact farming versus late game artifact farming. So until like AR35, I'd, the only thing I paid attention to on my artifacts was the stats, especially the main stat. And I honestly almost never went for this um, the set effect because I w it was really hard to farm artifacts. You just randomly get like a berserker piece here from killing a mob, uh, and that's about it. So what I would recommend is until you hit AR40 and you can farm artifacts, or if you were waiting till 45, fair enough, until you hit 45. Um, but at least until 40, I would recommend trying to get like a good two piece if you can, but mainly focus on just a good main stat and then maxing those artifacts. Uh, and this usually just applies for DPS because um, at those early levels, it's really hard to get good like sets and stuff for your supports because you can't farm noblesse, you can't do all that. So most of this video is for AR40+, plus, but I just want you guys to know if you're early game um, and just trying to like beat early floors of abyss and stuff, don't focus too much on substats or sets. Uh, ideally, yes, if you can get like a two piece berserker uh, instructor, something like that, do it, but definitely focus on the main stats and try to upgrade from three star to four star gear as much as you can, mainly on your DPS. Okay, I want to dedicate a specific section for Abyss because this is something that uh, a lot of people usually struggle with and also it's super important because you get so many Primo Gems. You get 100 per 3 stars as you guys know and then 9 to 12 resets every 2 weeks and basically every 2 weeks you get a free um, 150 Primo Gems per floor you can uh, fully clear. The reason we need a specific section on Abyss is because it's so unique and different from the rest of the game. Basically, you need two separate teams starting from uh, floor 5, which means you're going to need two DPS characters that are fully geared. Now, what that changes is that instead of focusing on your supports after your DPS, what you might want to do and what I did to clear Abyss is basically max a DPS, right? Then have like one or two good supports that just have decent artifacts with good main stats and not focus on the substats. And that'll be your first team. And then you want to have another DPS that's like maxed as well. So basically you're going to have to invest into two different DPS characters and focus on getting them good artifact sets. Those are the characters you can go for good substats on, good sets, good everything. And once like your two main characters have good sets, then you can go back and look at your supports. For example, uh, I only have eight stars on floor 12 now, uh, and I'm trying to get the nine soon. But what comp I used was basically I had Deluc and Zhongli, who have a lot of good artifacts on them. And then I just had a Venti who's not too well invested, and a Chi Chi level 60 with barely any good gear. And in my second team, my main DPS with Kich was Kaching, who has good artifacts, good substats, and just a bunch of other support characters that I haven't really invested in. In fact, I even used my level 26 Chongyun. So since I've been talking all this video, let me actually show you guys stuff. Let me show you what my uh, team looks like. So this is a team I use quite often, Deluc, Fischl, Venti, Bennett. Um, and so the, the first thing I did and what I'm still doing is just focusing on maximizing my, my DPS's artifacts. So going for good substats while I have the, you know, with the good artifact set. So, you know, crit damage here. This is like a perfect flower, basically. A decent sands, uh, a good goblet with nice substats and a decent circlet, but ideally the substats would be better. And then after that, uh, for Abyss, I tended to prioritize my other DPS, but just for this specific team comp, I went and focused on my support characters. So making sure I have the good set on Fischl without, you know, amazing stats, like these are only like plus 12. And then Venti, same thing, focusing on the Verdescent set with decent main stats and Bennett as well, uh, getting the Noblesse with decent main stats. And when I know I'm gonna be grinding Abyss, I make sure to invest in another DPS. Uh, I've been alternating between Kaching and Ningwang. I wanna bring her re uh, soon, so I'm gonna be maxing my Ningwang. But for now, uh, I've been using Kaching and uh, I just made sure I had the, the, set, the set that I want. And there's a lot of good sets on her, but I chose this one. Um, and just make sh making sure I have good main stats and ideally good substats. Some of my artifacts are decent and others are like really amazing. Like this this flower is great. And that's really helpful for Abyss because Kaching is gonna be my main DPS on another team. So I have to make sure that she's maxed or she'll be pretty much useless in like a floors 11, 12. And obviously, as you guys know, I love Zhongli. Um, I use him a lot with my Ningwang for the, so that he gets energy recharge. And because of that, I made sure to actually like max out his artifacts, get him plus 20 of the set he wants with really good substats. All right, so I really hope this was helpful because 
Um, I tried to just give a full guide on artifacts, Huda Gear, make everything clearer, um, but it was just really hard to structure this video. So I'm sorry if it ever got confusing or anything, but I really hope you guys enjoyed and that it helped out. If you guys, if I missed anything, have any comments, questions, please leave them because I read like every comment and I really appreciate the support I've been getting. Also, there's a pretty good chance I'll be live when this video is out. So if you guys want to check my Twitch, as I mentioned, it'll be in the description. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.